my good friend of long-standing, August Delamars. As we travel down the lane to his home, it is apparent that we're in the stockbroker belt. Although August is a wealthy man, he's very approachable and a friend to all. August is an extremely knowledgeable and successful pigeon fancier, a very close friend of the Janssen brothers. Most viewers will probably have read his articles in the pigeon publications. He has been one of the top sports journalists in Belgium in his time. Also, he was editor of one of Belgium's top pigeon weeklies. The wonderful hospitality people receive at the Delamans' home is due mainly to the trouble taken by Maria Delamans, seen in this shot with their old English sheepdog, two-year-old Benji. Recently, Maria had to go into hospital for major surgery, but thankfully, she's fully recovered. Even in these surroundings, the Belgian authorities allow people to keep pigeons. Perhaps there's a lesson there for our local councillors. This is August's racing loft. It is also the home of a magnificent family of direct Janssen pigeons, hence the aviaries. I believe he owns in the region of 26. If August has not got the best, I do not know who could have being obviously such a close friend and confidant of the family. August, this is your latest introduction from Janssen Brothers. Yeah. Directly. Directly, yes. A super pigeon. Well, I had an opportunity because Charles, I'm a very good friend of the Janssen Brothers, you know, when yeah. I was on visit. And Charles, he showed me his most beautiful young three British here. He oh, said, sure. He was so proud about it. He said, oh, look how good, what a beautiful bird we bred. I said, well, I'm going to buy. He said, no, 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 it's for myself. I said, no, 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 you have pigeons and hope. It's for me, okay? So finally I bought a bird. It's, uh, I have on this moment about 20 originals. 20 direct original yeah. Janssen. And I all have the opportunity and, and I have the occasion to buy them all from the best lines of Janssen. Super. And what's the mother and father to this one then? Uh, this is from the line of the old Lichte. The old Lichte, yeah? Yeah, the old Lichte is one of the basic birds of the Janssen birds. Eh? And uh, I was very happy with them, you know? Yes. And now I order again, one from the good Mali, one from the showman, from one from the daughter of the old fox, yes, and one of the daughter of the 019. What, for this year? Yes, for this year. It's beautiful is this? I want to have about uh, 30, 40 on the end of this year. A lot of, a lot of Janssen's? Well, I, I like the Janssen birds because they are very hard in breeding, and in my opinion they are very good to cross them with, with all, all other good lines. I'm sure. Yeah. The best, best sprint middle distance species in the world. I think so, yes. They and, must be. Uh, in my opinion, uh, everybody can have his own opinion, but you cannot discuss it because so many good fences all over the world doing well with the answer, with the evening of the yeah. answer. So sure. you cannot discuss that anymore, no. in my opinion. It's, it's got to be a fact. Yeah. It's got to be a fact. Yeah. Yeah. It's a proven fact. Yeah. Super pigeon obviously. Yeah, I like them very much. Yeah. I'm very proud and very happy with them. You know? Thank you. August. Terrific pigeon? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, one of my best. I ever had is uh, two times winner, one time winner in the union, and the union by us is about 1,400 members. 1,400 members in the Antwerp union? Yes, and uh, he won the first prize of uh, Bourdon as yearling uh, by more than 2,400 pigeons, and he won also the first prize provincial on Bourdon by more than 2,500 pigeons. Uh, that year, as a yearling, I raced them seven times and always between 2,000 and 4,000 pigeons and the 33 prize, that was the farthest he was on the result. So the lowest down the result was the, 30, 30, yeah. the 33rd prize? Yeah, including the two first he wins. And the two first? And yeah. what is the origin of this? Well, uh, it's... You uh, bet him yourself? Uh, I bet him by myself, yes. The father is uh, a direct Borgmans and Borgmans it means Catrice. Yes. With Janssen crossed and yes. Van Loon. And Van Loon from yes, Papel. Yes. 
And the mother was an original from William Geertz. Was she? Uh, she was a daughter of the Capoon, the Olympiad bird. Yes. With the sister of the Clamper. The Clamper was the first prize winner in the Union and also Olympiad bird for William Geertz. And what, and what is the origin of that line from Geertz then you think? Uh, one side is Hormans. Yes, Hormans. The other side is again Van den Bosch. Well, the old Van den Bosch. Yeah, it's always Comes coming back. It. Yeah, it's always coming back. Yeah. Always coming back to that, which was yeah, basically Janssen for Yeah. Basically yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Obvious. A beautiful eye. A lilac or a violet, as people might say. Yeah, you can see the good one. Yes, a beautiful eye. Has he bred you anything? Uh, yes, I had a very good son of him and I have a very good grandson of him. Also. Uh, no, one more than one. One, two, three, three grandsons of them who are doing very well. In the racing market? Yeah. Super. August. These are the pigeons that today have been to Boge in the yes. national race. Yes. And I believe you've all got one of your old birds back? Um, they are all back except one. Yes, your old birds. Yeah, yeah. And maybe all take prizes today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's been a heavy, a heavy race, a hard race because it's so hot. Yes, yes, but uh, I'm very satisfied they're doing very well, my old birds. Yes. Uh, it should be one of the only ones who has practically all his birds all, from... All his old birds yeah, back. Yeah, only his old. Um, today had been a record entry. Yes. How many pigeons today? Well, the, there are about 13,000 old birds, yes. 14,000 yearlings, and 51,000 youngsters. Altogether, more than 80,000. 80,000 pigeons? That's yes. the biggest race ever in Belgium. Yeah, it's the most popular race uh, in Belgium on this moment, is the bush race. And, and this morning, we were filming at Prost Roosens. Yes. Um, top lots of pigeons from Prost Roosens, as you know. You, you bought, them, bought, bought them for us this year. Yeah. Prost had a terrific season. And he's timed a very good pigeon in the Bourges National today. Well, he called me this afternoon after he catches his first bird. They yes. later on he called me again and he told me that in his area where he's racing... In Limburg? Yeah, that he should win probably the first prize, provincial. In the provincial? Yes, but he was short the first one in his uh, area. Yes. By more than 800 pigeons, but not only first. He make also four birds of his six by the six first. And the first six pigeons. Yeah, That's yeah. magnificent. I do oh, unbelievable well. Wouldn't it be a miracle if you won the national today after well, a I, I hope I hope for Pros um, I should be very happy for him, you know. Yes. Yeah, we make a bet for a super. Yeah. And uh, I should be the loser but I I like to pay it. <laughs> <laughs> well if you can't win yourself obviously. Yeah. Um the pair in box twelve August. Yeah. Um that's also a winner from Bourges. Uh, yes, uh, he was as youngster, he was a winner here in the area. Yes. Uh, the first prize of Bourges, he made also a top result in the provincial race and also on the national race. Also? Yes, but he was not only good on, on not only winner on Bourges, but he makes also a very top prize on Argenton. Yes. As youngster uh, and, also, and also La Souterraine, yes. Because in Belgium you race two La Souterraines, one from Argentina and one from Bourges with the young birds. Yeah, but that's because we raised the championship of Belgium for the youngsters, we race on that four races. Four national yeah, races. Yeah, you have the choice from three of the four races. That's right. And they can make point with the two first nominated pigeons. So the most prizes you can make is six. Yes. And then they make a calculation that who make the most top prizes is the winner of the national championship. Championship. Yeah. August, this you say is a box within a box. Yeah. When you design this loft. Well, uh, in my opinion, it's necessary for a good loft that you can control the warm, the heat, the cold, the humidity, everything. Yes. The for that reason, yeah, the ventilation. I, for that reason, I build a box in a box. For the insulation. Yes, so that I can close everything when I like yes. and I can open everything when I like. You know. The same with the ventilation in the roof. Would yes. you just show us yes, yes, how yes, the yes, ventilation yes. works? So. As I need, yes. I can close it. Yeah. If it's too cold, you close the ventilation. Yes, but not only for the cold. But for the humidity. Also for the warmth, for the heat. When yes. the temperature is going up very high, yes. I close it also. It keeps me the same temperature all the time. You know? So it's cooler with it, with it closed? Yeah, of course. It cools it down. When the sun is shining always on the On, on the, the tiles, stove. they yeah, get the red up. Well, right. it should be warm up very hot, you know? Yes. Well, when I cover it, by my, by my uh, separations here. It keeps the temperature down. Yeah. What sort of temperature do you want? Well, uh, let me say in summertime it can be 20, 22, 24 degrees, it's okay. Yes. As long as I can keep it around 20 degrees, it's okay. And I can open it, let me say, till half, half of the roof. 
Yes. Why not complete? Because I always want to keep my birds out of the windy, out of the ventilation. You understand? Yes, they want to be back in the box, yeah, in yeah, the back of the yeah, box. Yeah. So let me say that I always close it for the half. Yes. And where does the where does the fresh air come in in this loft, August? Presumably through here. Yeah. The fresh air. No more like that. No. I, I hate. None on the floor. No, I hate it. No good. No. It want, the fresh air wants to come in through yeah, here, yeah. and it falls onto the floor, and then it and it goes out through the. Why I do it because uh, when wet uh, wet air it gets is, is, is uh, uh, more Near the floor. more heavy. Yes. So it comes in on the top, it goes down to the floor and pushes the hot air out. And because like winter time, I have floor heating over yes, here. Yes. Yes. So it warms up. Yeah. And, and it go up again. And it's warm when it's yeah. going past so the pigeons. So it pigeon. keeps, uh, let me see, circulation. Super. And it keeps uh, all, all in best condition. I'm sure. Yeah. Lovely. And ventilation and humidity is the two most important things in pigeon racing, apart from perhaps feeding. You know, 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, I proved out. Yes. With help of the Weather Institute in Belgium. Yeah. They give me two or three times in a day, they give me the weather temperature, the yeah. humidity in the air and everything. And in that case, I built my loft and I control everything which is the best temperature and which is the best you uh, uh, humidity. Yeah. I write uh, 12 articles about it. A thesis it. on it. Yeah, yes. and it works perfect. I'm sure. If you keep it, uh, the humidity about 55 uh, percentage, you know? Yes. Super. Well, ev everybody's aware in this country and most people in England that you're probably the, the most um, authoritative journalist on, on on the pigeon sport in the world, I would think. I think it's. I think I can say that about you. And uh, th 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 this is the reason you. You know, one of the reasons you wrote this thesis 15 years ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it is something that uh, people still talk about today. Well, I think because it's the duty of a very good journalist that you bring information to everybody. That's right. So to help your your your, your novices, fans, novices yeah. in novices, the yeah. sport and everything, yes. well, I think you have to give out your information, all that you can catch. You have to give out to everybody. I think so. Yes, it's, it's your duty yeah, as a journalist. August, how long have you been in the pigeon sport? Well, uh, I started up in the pigeon sport directly after the Second World War. I was 11 years. I'm 57 now, so 46 years. 46 I mean, years in the sport. Yes. And a pigeon journalist you've been for a long, long time. Out for how many years? Uh, from 1957, I started as a journalist in the pigeon sport. You did? And I believe you were once the editor of one of the papers also? Well, yes, I was director of the Reisdorf, and I was cooperating with the, the Belgische Davensport, with the Laatste News, with the Sport AT, and I write articles for many uh, magazines in the world. Yeah, I believe so. Such as? Uh, like uh, Akio no Tomo in Japan, Japan yeah. uh, Lover Pigeon Ventures and uh, all the whole performers in, in Taiwan. Taiwan? Yeah. Uh, for the SEHU in South Africa. Yes. Uh, in America also, I think? Yeah, for the Toro Brett and the Racing Pigeon magazine. You're a frequent visitor also to uh, Taiwan, I think. Yes, I go this year for the 16th time I go to Taiwan. For the 16th time? Yes. And how many times in Japan? Uh, six times in Japan, this time for the seventh time to Japan. That's a lot of, a lot of times in the Far East. I was twice in the South Africa, I was in the United States. Yes. I travel all over the world. So I know you have many friends that come and visit you in Belgium and um, you conduct them on tours around Belgium to various well, countries. Yes, it's very regularly, practically every week. Yes. People from outside countries are visiting us here, especially for the pigeon sport. I think, uh, it, it, in all due respects, it, it's an honour to be able to do that, August. Well, uh, I like to do it. Yes, yes I'm sure. Yes, yes. And among your personal friends, I think, are the Janssen brothers also. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, how many years have you known the Janssens? Oh, I know from when I was a child, and then first I looked to him like to a statue, you That's know. That's right. But, uh, Indeed, a lot of other people have yeah. been. Yeah. Uh, when I was writing my articles for the newspaper, after a while, I had more contact with him. And, uh, yes. They accept me, let me say, like a, like a host friend. Uh, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, in fact, I believe you, you could, honor, could be said that you're a confident of the Janssens, really. Well, I think it's a question of, of, of confidence. Of trust. Yes, yes. These are very fine people, in my opinion. They are very honest people, and, and I like them very much. And, and Well, I go several times just for a talk. That's, all That's right. right. And they like to do it, yes. Um, I think you would regard them as being probably uh, the finest strain makers of all time, would you say? Of course. There is no discussion at all, you no. know. 
you have to understand uh, the Janssen brothers, they do it for, let me say, 70, 80 years, starting yes. by their father. father and, and, and Henry, the, I believe. Yes, and, and then the sons take over and, and still they keep their line as pure as possible, always yes. by inbreeding. So in my opinion, they are not only specialists, they are really fine people who knows how a bird must be bred. Surely to goodness. And the proof is, is, is done by so many pigeons spread all over the world and hundreds and hundreds of pigeon fences are very successful. That's with right. So you, you, would, you, would, you would say for the sprint middle distance there's never been a family of pigeons as, as good as the Janssens? Of course not. And, no. and, and I still have in question what uh, the people said that maybe the Janssen birds can only do in sprint and then middle distance. I can you give you ten names of pigeon fences all over the but world. Have won nationals at long distance. Of course. That's right. Van he. Yes. Especially yes. brought the Janssen birds in yes. in his line because they're doing so well and they bred right. them immediately national winners. It's the way you angle them. It's the way you angle them. Yes, you know the way you get them ready. Of course. Now in, in Belgium over the last twenty years or thirty years, who do you regard as being the best fanciers over that period of time? Hmm. Well, it's very difficult, you know, because uh, Belgium is well known as the roots of the pigeon sport and we yes. have many good faces, but one of them is certainly is Jan Grongelaas. I think for so myself. For myself, I think uh, if we take an average over the last 30, 40 years, without any doubt, Jan Grongelaas. He's been the best. My opinion, the best. Cross Rosen says the same. For the well, last 20 years. Let me say that Jan Grongelaas was the teacher of Cross Rosen. That's what he would do then. <laughs> yeah, he was friend. a pupil, yes. Yes, and then and, and the Prost was a pupil, and then yes. he raised some pigeons from Jan. From Jan, yeah. Brought them in his own lines, and then they do super. A terrific pigeon bounce here, Jan Grongelaas. And who else would you put in that uh, ilk? Oh, there are many good ones, uh, but uh, middle distance, well, uh, let me say. Uh, uh, William Geertz had a very good period. Yes. Uh, together with William Geertz, Willy van Berendonk is coming up. And, and in the union also? Oh, yes. yeah, not only in the union, but he do it also on the provincial races. Yes. And last year he won the national race of Bush. Bush. And, and 57,000 pigeons in total? Yeah, today we, we, I'm very sure he classified himself again on the top of the national race. Yes. From Bush. So he's... Uh, Those are the old Van den Bosch pigeons of Willis. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the pigeons of Grand Alaz are... Uh, uh, Hopkins, uh, Janssen, a little bit of Van Riel in them, I think, also. Well, uh, I think uh, all those guys, they use their ears and their eyes very well, you know. Yes, and, and they get them from the people that are doing well. They know well. where the bell is hanging and then they ring the bell when it's necessary. <laughs> That's <you know>? right. <laughs> so you're saying to me and to the, the viewers, really, that you, they go and buy pigeons from people that are flying well to keep themselves at the top of the sport. Well, of course, of course. They yes. follow the rules of the Lord, you know. You give them two ears and one mouth. That's right. It means they have listened twice. And they speak just one time, well, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 The north of Belgium, and especially the Antwerp region, is a very strong region for uh, for sprint and middle distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, in your opinion, of the finest sprint fanciers in Belgium at present? Well, I, I think uh, Sontjes from Womelgem. Uh, a man who can win 14 races from 15 in a year. Yes. He's super. Where was that? Uh, it was Sontjes last year. Yes. In, in, a, in, in your club, maybe, was in it? Very strong concurrence, unbelievable strong concurrence, and always by seven, eight hundred pigeons. Yes, and he won 14 out of 15 yeah, races. He was unbeatable. Yes, I know he's got a very good reputation for 10 yeah. years. And Prost Rusen flies very well with his pigeons, also. Yeah, yeah, and then Carol Hufkins is also a very strong uh, sprint racer. Eh? Carol Hufkins from Gale? From Gale, yes. Um, he has a five ace pigeons, I think, in the last 10 years. Five ace pigeons and I think three, certainly three, and perhaps four Olympiad pigeons on the sprint. In the last ten years? In the last ten years. And the basis of those pigeons is Janssen also? Is Janssen also. And Susan? Susan the same? Uh, so um, just Janssen? Yeah, there is a little bit Janssen yes, in it, I'm very sure. I think so. Yeah. So Janssen crop up again? Yeah, you come always on the same. I'm sure they do. On the same source, it's always coming It always up. comes back to Janssen yeah, Brothers. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Uh, it's just like everybody of us, we come from Adam and Eve, eh? That's right. Well, I think in the pigeon sport, a lot is coming from the Janssen birds. Uh, surely, especially for sprint to middle yeah, distance, yeah. and then for good crossing into long distance trains as well, to put the speed into them. Well, I don't know any good fencing in Belgium who has no Janssen, Janssen blood. Janssen pigeons, that's yeah, true. no Janssen blood. I'm sure that's right. And for the middle distance, I believe Huben raced very well. Uh, I'm very sure that Huben is one of the best of this moment in Belgium. Yes. Um, and what is his origin of, uh, of Huben's pigeons? Well, that's amazing. 
let me say that you can classify the Huben peaches just from the same origin from where the Janssen origin is coming. To the same base as the Janssen? As you know, the Janssen birds are formed by the scooters. Yes, from the brewer. From the brewer of Herentout yes. and from the Kurleman species from Berlar. Yes. Well, the grandfather of Hube, yeah. he was very good friend with Kurlemans. Also. One, one of the sites of the Anton origin. You know? At the same time. At the same time. And he brought from that side, he brought the pigeons of Kurlemans yes. to the father of Hube. So it means that in fact, Janssen and Hube are the two the same origins. But did, did Hube have them from the brewer also? Uh, I don't know exactly, but Kurlemans had that birds from scooters. Also. The combination was made before, you know. And uh, and the first gentleman you mentioned, Kurlemans, um, what origin were they? To go back another uh, another step, nobody that's, knows. That's from the the early the no the early 19th or or the the late 1800s. 1800s. Yes, and and uh, nobody really knows. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, because really the Janssens were forming the pigeons in the start of the modern pigeon sport. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. you can only really go that far back. And I am very sure Hubert did the same on his on his own way, you know. Yes. And and he keep also his pigeons very pure and and just he crossed in a little bit the uh, Smith Matthias. Just a bit of Yeah, and that's all. Um, so, so those pigeons were make very good crossing pigeons for the Janssens. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, and whereabouts does uh, Hoeven race? Uh, Hoeven race also here in the Antwerp province, you know. It does? Yeah. In, in, in the north of Belgium, which is yeah. the strongest area, you know, the south. Well, I should say that the Flemish part, and that is the north side of yes. Belgium, we have five provinces, West Flanders, East Flanders, Antwerp, Limburg, Limburg and Brabant. Yes. Well, they delivered, let me say, 80 80 percent of all the pigeon fences in Belgium. I give an example: Antwerp, 18,000 members. Yes. Uh, east of Flanders, 21,000 members. Yes. Uh, West Flanders, 13, 14,000 members. In Limburg, about 8,000, 8, I think. Brabant, about 20,000. About 92,000. About 90,000 well, members yeah, in just five yeah, provi yeah, provinces. Yeah, yeah. In the north. And and the the, the fact is that uh, in those provinces. Uh, Developed the pigeon sport, let me say, to more and more professional. It's so become more professional. The competition should be very hard, and, and if you want the survival, well, the only thing you can do is select very hard, otherwise, you are a loser in advance. That's right. Uh, you know, you've got to be uh, very keen on selection every year. And the birdage is increasing. Uh, the record, the, a record birdage last year from Borg, 57,000. Yeah. This year, it's even being better. There's 80,000. Well, that's amazing. Year. The number of pigeon fences is going down. Just slightly, not, yes. Not very heavy no, anymore, just because it, it stabilized a little That's bit right. now. But, but the, the amazing is going thing up. is that the number of pigeons is coming up. That's right. So everybody bred more pigeons, That's select right. more harder. That's right. And finally, uh, on the end... Uh, you get a better product. Yeah. You think it's going to you get a better product for no, that? No, it works very well. I, I think so. I'm very sure. I'm sure it does. August, we've been friends for quite a number of years now. Um, and I'd like to thank you for giving this interview for the British Fancy, in fact for the Fancy worldwide. I'd like to also to thank you on behalf of the Fancy for everything you've done for the Fancy, you know, for the sport generally. Um, you've made a tremendous contribution over the years and I'm the first to realise that and not the only person by any means. Thanks very much indeed. Okay, thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Along this street, for almost a hundred years, have walked the most famous feet in world pigeon racing. This is School Street, Arendonk, a small town on the Belgian-Dutch border. And the feet, of course, belong to the family Janssen. Henry Janssen and his famous sons have been wonderful ambassadors for the sport of pigeon racing. The family home is at number six and over this threshold have stepped thousands of visitors from all over the world, of every colour and creed. And although the invasion of their privacy must have been tiresome on many occasions, they never complained and always accepted being in the public eye with great dignity and humility. This modest terrace house has been the home of the brothers for most of their lives. After visitors enter the small courtyard at the rear of the house, they are immediately struck by a feeling of majesty. There is a presence that is difficult to define. It feels as if time has stood still, 
you can feel the overwhelming atmosphere of yesteryear, as though you can reach out and touch the dear departed Henry and Pauline Janssen and six of their nine children. Obviously, they cannot be present in the flesh, but you can believe me, they are all there in spirit. It is now time to introduce to you the players in this magnificent saga that spans 14 decades and two centuries. Henry Janssen, born 1872, died 1949. A mild-mannered man with a quiet disposition, was successful with pigeons from the outset as a 14-year-old, but more of that later. Pauline Janssen, Mama, born 1877, died 1967. Most of the people who knew Mama Janssen during her long 90 years on this earth believed that on her death she did not go to heaven but returned there because she surely was an angel. Pauline outlived her husband by 18 years. She died in 1967. Alphonse Janssen, Fons, born 1895. Fons was the oldest of Henry and Pauline's nine children. He was a much underrated pigeon man, very much revered by his father, and took an active part in the formation of the early Janssen family of pigeons. More on that subject later. Fons left the family home when he married at the age of 27. Franz Janssen, born 1897, died 1982. Franz was never in the public eye, but he lived his long life to its full, never leaving Arendonk, and what may surprise a lot of viewers, he was himself a very successful fancier. Like Fons, he left home to marry. He was the second oldest of the children. Two interesting points. First, the young Charles Janssen formed a partnership with his older brother. This, however, did not flourish, because evidently Franz was too generous towards his friends and thought nothing of giving away their best pigeons. So Charles went home to fly on his own. Secondly, that very successful fancier of world renown, Louis Van Loon from Poppel, formed his great family of pigeons around those obtained from France. Jeff Janssen, born 1902, died 1988. Jeff, my family found, to be a super person. He died in 1988 between the shooting of both films. Although not a fanatical fancier like his father or brothers, it was not in his makeup to be a winner, but he was a person I would have liked to know better. Jeff did the menial tasks. Here you see him sweeping up the courtyard. He also walks the dog, collects the clocks for the races, but never handles the pigeons. Well, hardly ever. On our visit in 1985, it came out in the conversation that the brother's most famous pigeon at that time, the world-renowned 019, which had won 18 first prizes for them, had never been handled by Jeff. That was put right that day. The cock was then 12 years old, and as you can see, he handled it as though born to it. What am I saying? Of course, he was born to it. Vic Janssen, born 1905. Up until his death, Vic never married. He lived at home with his brothers and sister Irma. And, as if he had to be the exception to the rule, never had any inclination towards pigeons. His first love was like that of his father, before he took to pigeon racing. Small birds, finches and canaries. The passion in Vic could be roused, however, by a good football match. Irma Janssen, born 1909, died 1980. Irma never married. She was the epitome of Mama Janssen. One can safely assume that she saw her purpose in life as caring for the family after Mama could not cope any longer. Much loved and revered by her brothers, her passing left a similar void as when Mama passed away. Adrian Janssen, born 1906, died 1981. Now I must try and script a portrait of one of the finest pigeon fanciers ever to grace our sport, 
If my woeful ability with the pen leaves this task only partially achieved, I am safe in the certain knowledge that even the finest authors would have immense difficulty doing justice to this subject. Adrian is simply Adrian, the most accomplished of the brothers, a shy, retiring figure, not a very good mixer. When he spoke, which was not often, he would speak so quietly that one would have extreme difficulty hearing him. He was only comfortable when he was surrounded by their pigeons, and they adored him. Adrian was the racing man among the brothers. He was also the memory man of the family, the modern-day computer, so to speak. No records of the breeding details were written down. If anyone had a question that Charles or Louis couldn't answer, which was quite frequent, all they did was ask the computer. He always knew the answer. When Sister Irma died, Adrian never really recovered from the shock and passed on shortly afterwards. Before doing so, however, he had one final task in life, one that for which all the lovers of the Janssen pigeons the world over will be forever in his debt. On his deathbed, he solemnly dictated for days the breeding of the pigeons to his very attentive brother Louis. It was not until this task was completed that he slipped quietly away. Marie Janssen. Marie was the other daughter of Henry and Pauline. She, unlike Irma, did marry. In fact, she was the wife of Tist Eisen, whom connoisseurs of the Janssen family of birds will know raced very well with them for a good number of years in the town of Arendonk. Louis Janssen, born 1912. Louis is the most amiable, the PR, the bookkeeper. Although his memory is not as good as it used to be, it is still quite excellent. In the early days, he worked as a diamond cutter, an occupation of one of his older brothers. Later, in his work life, he worked in a local cigar factory. Although not in the same class as Adrian and Charlotte and the Pigeons, it is because of his dedication to the tedious side of the pigeon racing, the footwork, that we can be eternally grateful for the accurate records to be kept. When we last heard, it was discovered to great amusement that it was Louis's birthday the very next day. He would be 79 years young. Charles Janssen, born 1913. At a mere 78, he is the baby of the family. When we visited him last, his health was not too good. He had severe breathing problems. As I have previously mentioned, Charles' early excursion into pigeon racing was with his older brother, Franz. When this did not work out, he set up a lot of his own at the family home. These teenage years soon passed by, and then he joined in with the rest of the family with the pigeons. Charles, like Adrian, was a natural pigeon person, though both were quite individuals. Their dedication and will to win was stronger than any ordinary fancy. Nothing was too much trouble. They both simply lived for the pigeons, and the pigeons lived for, raced for, and won for them. When Adrian was alive, he used to look for the natural flyers, and Cheryl's task was to take care of and prepare the widowhood cocks. Every one of the family had an individual function that complemented each other. Fonds are like pigeons. Adrian lovingly took care of the natural he motivated the widow of Cox. Louis, he took care of the bookwork and the PR. Jeff did the menial tasks, ran the errands. Irma, she took over the welfare of the brothers after the morning passed away. Rick watched his football and then kept out of the way. France married and flew the family flag elsewhere in Arendonk with much success. Marie, married Dist Eisen, and he raced very successfully. Savour these moments. We will never see their like again. The lofts. The brothers have four lofts in the attic. One old bird loft in the garden, which is called the run. Visitors sometimes mistakenly believe that this is the stock loft. 
In fact, the brothers do not have a lot designated solely for breeding purposes. Then, of course, the three meter long young bird lot with its large aviary. Notice the amount of glass in this lot. Their lofts are very spartan, old-fashioned even, very cold in winter and warm to hot in summer, depending totally on the nature of the weather. All timber surfaces within the lofts are untreated. The brothers believe that wood should be able to breathe. To sum up then, no modern gadgets or devices, things are left to nature as they have been for above 100 years. But it must be stressed, the occupants of the loft have plenty of room. The maximum amount of pigeons that are wintered is 35 pairs. They are scrupulously clean. Three times a day, this aspect of management is attended to. The birds are very happy in their environment. What is more surprising is the fact that into these very attic lofts, their small select band of champions perform. Just imagine how many great racing pigeons have pitched on this roof and trapped well in advance of their race rivals. Upon closer examination of the surroundings, we see the stuff that legend is made from. In this small courtyard, it's of course the old pear tree, appearing to be rather too big for its surroundings. The legendary well from which the water for the pigeons has been drawn there many years. The brothers occasionally throw a lump of chalk into the water to keep it nice and soft. From the courtyard at the rear of the house, you gain access through the kitchen. And upon entering the home of the brothers, you get the feeling that you are passing into a time warp, so to speak. Very little has changed over the last 50 years or so. On our latest visit, we accompanied August Delamans, who is a long-time friend and confidant of the family.
The brothers have always had a little dog about the house. Never one with a fine pedigree, as one might expect, but an ordinary mongrel. This one's name is Pookie, and he is not as aggressive as his predecessor was some six years ago. A moment of light amusement in a very relaxed atmosphere. This was the first time the family had allowed the film cameras into their home. Charles, as you can see, is fascinated with his image appearing in the monitor. Most of you will recognize the friend of the family seated between Charles and Lewis. He is, of course, Felix Powells, one of the finest sprint fanciers of all time in Belgium. In fact, Felix is the sprint champion of all Belgium this season, 1991. The tall figure on Lewis's left is Roger Persons of Haaland in the province of Limburg an outstanding exponent of middle and long distance racing. Felix is holding a daughter of the young Merckx. The pigeon in Roger's hand is its mother. Yes. That is the mother. This one, this is the mother. This is the mother of that hand. That's the mother of that hand. Yes. And that is the half-sister of Amanda Vin. This one is the half-sister of the mother. Felix Powell's producing. The same hand. Yeah, the same hand. The same mother. Eighteen first prizes. Eighteen. 
18 first prizes. Yeah, from 1973. From 1973. the This is the mother of the Skullman. She is one of the brother's best breeding hens. We have all heard the stories of the many visitors to the Janssens who never got a drink on the first or even second visits. I must say, on every occasion I have been there, their hospitality has been faultless. Indeed, this was the very first visit I ever made. <laughs> Photographs adorn the walls, taking us even further back into the past history of the unique family. Mama and Papa Janssen. This lovely old photograph depicts Henry and Pauline in the prime of life. Note the old hand-pumped water system. No hot and cold running water on tap here. Here, Jeff tries to make my wife understand that this is the direction in which the pigeons come on race days. Roger's required to interpret. It was at the front, in a lull between the action, that Pons met and became friendly with Louis Curlins. Louis's father was a champion fancier back home in Berlin. The year was 1916, 
and Fonz couldn't wait to go and visit his newfound friends at home to see the pigeons. Alas, the enemy had other ideas. Fonz was captured and became a prisoner of war until June 1919. Upon his release, he immediately went to the town of Berla to look up his old friend Louis. The result of this reunion of old comrades in arms was a gift from Louis' father of a pigeon to take home to Arundel. The pigeon in the basket, when he finally arrived home, was the Voss of 1919, a red cock, which along with other reds from the same source in 1926, were the sole origin of all the red Janssen pigeons that are about today. Louis proudly shows this red cock to the camera. The bloodline of this very bird extends to the original Coilerman's pigeons obtained just after the First World War. The Janssens have at present only three red pigeons in their loft, one cock and two hens. Some fanciers maintain that inbreeding reduces the size in pigeons. Well, it certainly doesn't seem to have had any effect upon this bird. The pigeon is returned to the run. That is the name the brothers have given to the small garden loft. Many fanciers believe that the run is the stock loft. They're mistaken. The brothers do not have a loft solely for breeding purposes. The evolution of the Janssen strain. The dynasty of the Janssen strain of pigeons can be definitely defined into four distinct eras. It is the latest era that we are the most interested in, but we also need to paint a picture of all that has gone before. Phase one, the beginning. 1886 to 1926. Only good local pigeons were used. This 40 year period virtually belonged solely to Henry Janssens. The influence of firstly Fonz, the oldest son, and then his other brothers didn't come into play until the 1920s. Henry's early family of racing pigeons were a mixture of good local birds crossed in together. He raced in the Ald Turnhout Club from 1886 to 88, and then, at the ripe old age of 16, became one of the founder members of the first pigeon club in Arundonk, the year 1888. His first real champion, a blue hen, she won 20 first prizes up to the advent of the First World War in 1914. After the war ended in 1918, Henry continued where he had left off four years previously. Phase two. The introduction of the three main elements in the formation of the Janssen strain. Fonz was much liked by his father, and his opinion was respected. He was to prove to be a good pigeon fancier in his own right. After his marriage in 1922, Fonz naturally flew the nest, so to speak, but he remained close to his family in Arundonk. Upon his travels, following his occupation as a customs and excise inspector, he met numerous champion fanciers throughout Belgium. 
Upon his recommendation, the Janssen family visited several of these and obtained the pigeons that form the present-day Janssen strain. Pigeons were purchased from the following in 1919 and 1926 from Koilemans of Berlar. The reds in the family of the Janssens came down through the two pigeons they bought from Koilemans. For example, the Wonder Boss of 45 was a result of the purchase from Koilemans of the Voss, red, of 26. From 1932 to 1937, from Jos Schuters of Herentout. Jos Schuters was a wealthy brewery owner who owned a family of pigeons based upon the old Vegas and Gitz families. At this stage, to illustrate the formation of the modern-day Janssen strain, we could do worse than to look at the pedigree of the Wonderboss of 45. When we visited the Janssen brothers in 1985, they had only three red pigeons in their lofts, one cock and two hens. These were direct descendants from the Wonderboss of 45. Wonderboss 45, Belge 45, 411053. This wonderful little red hen became a legend in her lifetime in Arendonk, winning many first prizes. This hen's pedigree represents an amalgamation of all the phase two families, which form the present day pigeons. On the paternal side, she's of the old Coilerman's bloodlines. On the maternal side, she's bred down through the world famous Shally Blue of 32, a pure shooter's pigeon that is responsible for slaty pigeons one finds in the family. The Shelley Blue of 32 was paired to the Blue of 30, a hen of Henry Janssen's old family. So, in this one pedigree, you have three of the four ingredients that form the modern-day Janssen strain. The fourth and final ingredient did not arrive until much later. This is the pedigree of the immortal rapper, bred as a late bred in 1935, who went on to win 15 firsts in his racing career. His sire was the Shelly Blue of 32, pure shooters. The dam of the wrapper was from the old family of Henry Janssen. The old white eye from 33. This was again one of the foundation pigeons. Again, half shooters and half Henry's old family. Phase three, 1945 to 1970 the golden years. These were indeed the golden years of the Janssen brothers. Father Henry died in 1949 and the restraint of his old-fashioned ways were lifted from the brothers. In his lifetime they were not allowed to practice the widowhood system. Only natural racing was allowed. This was obviously a great drawback but the fact that they still managed to remain competitive was down to the wonderful team of pigeons that they possessed. Winnings in the 50s. 1953 season, 28 first prizes. 1954 season, 30 first prizes. 1955 season, 32 first prizes. 1956 season, 30 first prizes. From 1945 to 1958, an average of 18 first prizes a season were won. Please bear in mind, this was achieved with only a small team of pigeons, flying in strong competition without duplicating. Here illustrated are just a few of the magnificent pigeons that belong to this golden era. The Rapper, the Oudwittuga, the Raustar, the Wondervoska, the Bangers of 51 and 59, the Half Fabry, the Old Wittuga of 65, and last but not least, the Old Mercs of 67. The year before Henry Janssen died, the real superstar of the Janssen strain was born, the Blue of 48. This is without doubt the father of the modern day Janssen strain. Never in the long history of world pigeon racing has there ever been bred another bird that you could even compare with this truly fabulous pigeon. The Blue of 48. 
For many knowledgeable Janssen experts, this bird is the finest pigeon of all time, of this strain or any other. He is a direct descendant of the base pigeons, the shally blue of 32 and the blue of 30. What you will find very interesting is that the paternal side of the blue of 48 and the maternal side of the wonder Oscar of 45 are just the same. Both being descendants of the legendary shally blue of 32 and the blue 30. Pure shooters and Henry Janssen's old family. There is the key to the Janssen breeding secret. Perhaps it happened by accident, but I would like to believe it was by design. Let us examine the progeny of the blue of 48. The Mercs, so naturally the young Mercs, 019, Velo, etc. The G Luger and the Rockets of 73 and 76. The Banger of 59. The Chateau Roux of Jan Grondelaars was also a grandson of the blue of 48. The base pair of Staff van Reit, both pigeons owe their existence to the blue of 48. The list is endless, but I think the point is made. It is so important in the understanding of this unique family of pigeons that you grasp the very basics. Study carefully the pedigrees of the blue of 48, Vandervoska 45, De Rapper of 35, and the Odvituga of 33. In these four pigeons, you will discover the truth, the light, and salvation, in pigeon terms, that is. Once the basic breeding pattern of these four producers has been digested, tackle the extended pedigree of the older Mercs, and if after careful in-depth study of this, you are not confused, you are well on the way to mastering the Janssen breeding plan, which has been totally successful for above 100 years. The old Mercs, B67, 6282031. In my opinion, the old Mercs was the second best producer the family ever owned. The best, of course, as you may be aware, was the blue of 48. Incidentally, study his pedigree, and you will find the blue of 48 in just about every line leading up to the birth of this great racer producer. As a racer, the old Mercs had no equal. He won above 20 first prizes. He was the most famous pigeon in the world. During the 70s, he reproduced his like time and again. First, take three quick examples. Young Mercs, 019, and Velo. All sons of the Mercs. They won 15, 18, and 15 first prizes each, without doubling. Study his pedigree again. The answer to the family's breeding program is there for all to see. One must remember that the Mercs was not a striking pigeon to look at. You would never pick him out, but he had the ancestry.
Banger 51, B 51, 611 One of the mainstream players in this magnificent pigeon drama. To understand the Janssen strain of pigeons, you will have to work out for yourself the role that this pigeon plays. Until you do that, you'll go round in circles. If I took the shortcut and told you what it took me some time to discover, it would lose its benefit, which is to make you think and study and inwardly digest the knowledge that is so necessary so as to understand this complex drama. Banger 59, B 59, 6236207. The timid one of 59 was yet another great racer and producer that came off the young.